Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with us, Mr. Tim Wilburn, who is the industrial sorcerer at TW Controls. So welcome, Tim. Thanks for having me, Chris. I must admit that is the most unique uh, title I've ever seen on LinkedIn. I love it, man. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so get us started, Tim. We love these conversations to, to share with our, our listeners about your journey to where you're at now. Well, I would love to tell you that I went through school and knew exactly what I wanted to do and I went to college for this, but no, um, my, my journey was not like that. I grew up in a machine shop actually. And really I was, I was helping out in my dad's machine shop when I was about 12 years old. And when I turned 16, my dad actually made me go get a job in the service industry and that was actually true for all our siblings. Uh, some of us worked at grocery stores, some of us worked at the mall, some of us worked at the restaurant, you know, and I started off washing dishes and eventually waiting tables. And this might seem like a small side note, but it's the one time in my career that I had to engage with the public, both in their best and their worst moods. And that probably helped me more today as far as communicating with people than anything I ever learned anywhere else. But when I turned 18, I was allowed to go back and work at the machine shop. Uh, so I went back and I started learning more about machining and fabrication. And I always tell people I wasn't a good machinist. <laughs> but, and I always tell people that are in a father-son relationship, you can never pass your parent at a skill because they they have 30 years of experience on you. So I always encourage them to find some lane that they can kind of kick out and maybe become a compliment to their parent. And so at that time, uh, my dad was wanting to switch over and do turnkey automation. At that point, they did really the mechanical part and somebody else did the electrical and someone else did the controls. Well, they wanted to do it all in house and they didn't have anybody for programming. And so I thought, well, okay, here's, here's an opportunity. Let me see if I can program PLCs. And so my first project actually was probably one of my, my most compli complicated projects even today. And I went in at nights to work on the machine. That way everybody wouldn't know that I didn't know how to program. And I went in there at the time, you know, we didn't have the internet. So I went in there with all the manuals and everything. And I sat down there and I figured out how to program this machine. And so I started seeing that I kind of had a knack for this and I, it just seemed to be something I was interested in. So that kind of got me down this road to get started. Okay. Now, now the, how about TW controls? How did it lead to that? Well, I uh, worked at my dad's shop until actually it closed. And then I wor went and worked for a local manufacturer and Long story short, uh, with Amber and I are, were pregnant, uh, either seven or eight months with our first son, and we both quit our jobs and started the company. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we definitely didn't have a plan. We definitely did not have a, a, um, a structure. We definitely did not have any of the things that you'd check the boxes to start this company, but uh, we... Uh, we had heart. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So what is the focus of TW Controls for the listeners that may, may be new? Well, TW Controls, probably the, the, the part that most people don't know is our primary focus is actually building UL508A control panels and building simulators and testers that are used in our industry. And the mo two biggest ones would be our SIM ALP2 analog simulator that can simulate a four to 20 milliamp signal or a zero to 10 volt signal and our SIM IPE, which is used to troubleshoot and configure ethernet IP devices. Okay. But most people probably know us for our training. Gotcha. <laughs> That's where they hear from us, which actually is not a revenue stream. Our training is a, is an outreach program that we use just to get people into our industry. Okay. So it's, it's two, basically separate different entities within that TW control umbrella. Yes. Okay. Very cool. And I love the service 
component that uh, your dad Nate that kind of forced you into. Yeah, you know, I, I was the same way. I had, actually I worked at a uh, at a service station, so the the old style, you know, where you pull up and it rang the bell and we'd come out and clean your windshield and check your oil and things like that. And I tell you what, working for the public, I think everyone should have to do it once. Yeah, once <laughs> only. You know, just because it's uh, it does teach you so much, but it helps you in that communication. It's definitely I can just tell by your heart. You know, you you love serving people and helping people. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, now I did notice on LinkedIn. I got to ask you about it. You put the College of Hard Knocks, man. So what, what's up with that on, on, on your LinkedIn profile? Well, uh, so I did. I did go the traditional school method to start with, um, and I got three and a half years in and decided I knew it all, and I quit and pressed on and learned that I didn't know it all. And looking back, that may be one reason that I have such a focus on helping people get into this industry because really when I was coming up, it was you finish high school, you go to a four year school and you start a career. Well, I, I wasn't cut out for a regular college. I should have, somebody should have told me that there were technical colleges. I didn't even know they existed. And, you know, I could do the work, but I needed that hands-on component. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't take a test. And just to, to give you an example of it, 20 years ago, and it's kind of starting to show my age there. I took a class on motors and this was a remote learning class. And there was probably my second downfall is, yeah, I was doing remote learning 20 years ago and they definitely didn't have it then. I don't know that they have it now, Right. but we did it on, on motors. And it's like, I just don't think I'll ever understand how a motor turns. Mm -hmm. And last year, my kids were interested in motors. Well, you know me, if you've seen most, most of my videos, it's okay. Well, let's go cut one apart and figure out how it works. And I cut that motor apart. And all of a sudden, those equations from 20 years ago and everything, I mean, I, probably with 90% accuracy, I remembered them. And I, all of a sudden, I grasped, oh, my goodness, this is how a motor works. I needed that hands-on component. So the College of Hard Knocks are really those hands-on learning experiences that I've had on the way that really, I think, have been probably – more important in building my career no doubt man and i, I tell you what that the traditional uh path that the high school counselors they they're pushing everybody towards that that's not always right because mm -hmm. you know there's there's so much there's so much uh that could be learned in these trade schools and i think this, the work that you're doing and advocating for the you know, people to to learn a skill set and a, tra a, a trade i mean you will always have a job, you know, if you learn some of these the things that you're Absolutely. teaching. Absolutely. So how about, you know, you're serving industry in, in so many ways. What are you hearing out there from a challenge standpoint? What do you, what do you see down the pipeline from that they're facing right now? Well, I, I think we just walked, walked right into this question is people. Yeah. I mean, there is such a shortage of people in this industry that I hear of companies that are making decisions not to do capital improvement projects because they wouldn't be able to get the people to run it or maintain it. I mean, and that's just, that is just a sickening feeling that people are, well, one, they're wanting to spend money. They're wanting to improve their processes. Mm -hmm. And the one factor that they can't get is the people to support it. Right. I mean, it's, we're hearing it too, that workforce attrition. I mean, the people are retiring faster and they're coming in and, you know, those mentors are leaving. And, uh, you know, so, I, so when I see stuff like what you're doing at TW Controls, it's, it, it just gives me hope, you know, that you're going to touch that, that next generation and really give them that information that they need to, uh, to pursue this industry. Because I think there's, there's two, Tim. You, maybe, what do you hear about this? Is there a, a, a misperception about industry? Do you think that's what's holding some people back from wanting to come into it? Absolutely. I mean, and you know, we, we watch, you know, these history documentaries and you see, you know, this tall person that weighs 250 pound, all muscle, and he's covered in dirt. And then people think that that's what manufacturing is. And then manufacturing is a clean, comfortable environment that, we really have got to show more. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Now, how about, I know you, you mentor a lot of, of the next generation. What's some common uh, tips that you're giving people to when they want to start thinking about coming this route versus a, a traditional, uh, you know, college path or things like that. 
is not is not as hard as you think. I mean, I think if there's anything I can tell everyone out there, it is not nearly as hard as you think. You know, everybody says, well, you got to be, you know, super good at math. No, you don't. There may be there may be certain focuses that you have to be exceptional at math, but I will say that most of them you absolutely do not. And you'll probably find as you get in, you're actually better at math than you realize. You've just never had a practical application where you can be like, oh, that is why we would do that. Yeah, that's right. And then when you can actually see it work, in a, like you said, in a practical application, it, just, it seems like that's when it clicks. And it, this, that's what a teacher made me do that years ago, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So Tim, man, you're, you're helping people, you're giving them these advice and you're being mentors and you've, you've talked about that. So does, do you have any mentors that, that stand out that have helped you along the way? Well, yeah, there's been a lot, uh, pro well, probably since we started off with me working in my dad's machine shop, he definitely was one. And, uh, you know, probably more than anything, I was never taught that there was anything I couldn't do. I mean, I, it, it just wasn't in our vocabulary. I mean, my dad was a firm believer that you could do anything. All you had to do was set your mind to it. And that's what I try to make sure I tell people today. But probably more broadly is people in the PLC forums, which mm -hmm. they're not as po popular as they used to be. And that's a little concerning to me. But over the years, you know, they've encouraged me and they've guided me. And, you know, and they, even they've called me out when I've got something wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the forums were, they're a two-way street. They are a conversation just like you and I are having now. And I worry about, you know, now we're more of into consumer social media. And don't get me wrong, I, I do need some people to watch my videos, if you will. But it's a lot of one-way street. You're just looking at it and you're like, oh, well, I've got it. And those relationships um, are still, you know, actually, it just popped in my head. You know, we talk these relationships are, you know, virtual, but they're not. A lot of the products that even you see on TW Controls, we, we have partnerships with people that we met on the forums and they are real, you know, physical, genuine relationships. Yeah. And I, I will worry a little that we're not getting that today. Right. Now, the forums that you're talking about, you know, maybe share some. What are some of them that you that you frequent that you find people still use? Maybe not, not quite as often, but I'd be curious to know what some of those forums are. Uh, well, you have um, Phil Malore's PLCs.net. That is probably, I'll say, has a good, broad um, variety of people. Uh, there's one on, over on Reddit uh, that's a PLC forum. And there's, you know, there's a few on LinkedIn. Uh, I can't think of any of them off the top of my head, but yeah, probably, probably my favorite one still, which was my favorite 20 years ago, or well, maybe it was 20 years ago, whenever he started it, it was plcs.net. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll definitely make sure we put those links in our show notes, Tim, for the people who want to check them out and encourage them to go there, uh, and participate and learn more. So good stuff, man. Now, how about, you know, for, for when you're the happiest and you're doing the work that you enjoy and you got a smile on your face, man, what are you doing in those moments? Probably helping somebody. Um, probably not for pay. <laughs> I mean, really, if I, you know, if, if I can get an email later and it may be a year later, it may be two years later, I'm getting emails that were 10 years later and somebody suddenly at least says, Hey, that advice you gave me helped me get a job or yeah. Hey, I just used that that um, answer that you gave so many years ago. I just used it to fix my machine. I mean, those are just the moments that st I still get butterflies over. Isn't that awesome, man? That's a, that is so great. Now, how, I am curious, since you do have the, the panel side of your business and the education side, how are you splitting your time up there? Um, well, Amber would tell you I probably spend way too much time helping people for free. Um, we don't do a good job at that. <laughs> but I, I think that part's important. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there will probably never be a revenue stream that really you can look at Excel spreadsheet and justify it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we spend insanely too much time on it. Well, I'm sure it's, it's got to be leading you, though, with, with, with potential leads and connections for your business. And, you know, I just know, but like you said, the piece that you're helping people is, is so fulfilling in itself. Mm -hmm. 
Now, how about uh, highlights, man? What, when you look back th uh, across the things you've done, uh, what stands out? Or maybe videos that, that, that uh, perform better than you, than you thought they would perform? Just curious on what your, your take is here. Hmm. Well, I mean, there, there's plenty of highlights. Uh, you know, uh, our first job was probably a big highlight because we realized we weren't going to go under. <laughs> um, our first international job, that was, that was a big deal. Probably the one that sticks out the most to me is we had a job locally that some of the top engineers really couldn't make work. And they spent a year battling it. And actually, they, you know, they brought in every manufacturer and they couldn't. And finally, myself and three others were challenged with fixing it. They're like, whatever you got to do, figure out how to fix this thing. And so we spent about a year really planning it. And then we had seven days to shut the system down and bring the next one online. And I would love to say that we flipped the switch and it worked great, but uh, no, it didn't work that way. Uh, 33 days later, we actually did get it working and working really well. And in that though, we took that system from an uptime of 50% to an uptime of over 99%. Oh, wow. And and actually it's, you know, and that's what actually talk about, I guess the control panel side of it, really my favorite jobs are the ones where I work my way out of a job. I mean, I was there religiously for so long and we got done with that and it was over. Right. I mean, I go in there, but once a year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a great story, man. Now you said the international job. So where was your international at? Uh, it was in El Salvador. That was our, our first El international job. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. That's, that's great stuff. Now, we, we love to talk on the, the hero episodes, Tim, a little bit outside of work and, and, and our careers just to, just to get to know the people. So, man, outside of uh, when, when you don't have the camera on and you're making awesome videos that help people or you're not building these, these great panels in your shop, any hobbies you got? Well, I, I, mostly I enjoy th doing things with my kids okay. uh, and a neighbor, obviously. Uh, and really, I enjoy trying to push them a little bit, trying to ex get them to explore something, expose them to something new. Uh, their project right now, actually, <laughs> so they're, um, they are being homeschooled just for this year. And I didn't like the amount of screen time they had. I just didn't think, well, obviously, you can tell that I'm a hands-on learner. And I didn't feel they were getting all that they could out of school so we got them a 47 plymouth and by the end of the school year they have to have that restored oh wow okay so, so there is the type of things we end up doing so yeah they've learned how to you know cut floors out how to weld them uh, they had a budget and they couldn't afford the floors so they had to go buy steel they had to learn how to bend their own steel and they're uh they're working on the brakes now and yeah, before, before the end of the school year for them to pass, according to dad, they, yeah. um, they have to have it ready to sell. Man. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a fun project, man. <laughs> now does dad jump in and help them from time to time? Or is it all them? Um, it is mostly them. I like to say I guide them in the right direction. Okay. In fact, I'll, um, I'll send you a link to a video where they were, they were learning how to use a brake drum puller. Okay. And I gave them enough to realize how to put it on and how to start tightening. Uh -huh. And tell them that, you know, it was going to suddenly pop off for yeah. any of those things. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I let them explore a lot of it. But, yeah, we have a good time with that. Also, Amber and I, we do a lot of drinking water and sanitation projects. That's kind of a, a ministry that we really enjoy. And yeah. actually, that came out of me working in El Salvador. Uh, we were doing a high purity water and a wastewater system at an industrial facility. And we were like, all right, where do you want to put the effluent or really the treated water? And they're like, yeah, we're going to put it into this gutter and it goes out to the street. And like, you can't do that. It's got to go into, you know, your municipal sewer. And they're like, no, no, come here. And we walk over the river and you can see the drain pipe from the sewage and everything else out of the plant. And it just goes right in the river. They're like, it goes to the same place. Oh, and it was the first time I really started thinking, you know, what, what is, is everybody not have water out of the tap? And it just never had occurred to me before. Right. Right. So how often do you guys get to do those types of projects? Well, we're always involved in something. Um, 
<laughs> probably more than we should. It's probably exactly the same as our PLC training. We're involved more than we should. Be. I got you. Well, if it's a ministry that's 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 important to you and that you have a passion for, I mean, I think that's uh, that speaks to your character. Thank you. Now you've mentioned your family, and so your wife she's part she's part of TW Controls, right? And then you have yes, two, is it two kids? Yes, we have two kids. Okay, uh, our son Michael is fourteen, and our daughter Wendell is twelve. Okay, now where's uh, where are you from originally? Uh, well, I'm from right down your way. I was born in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Okay, and your wife. She was born here in Roanoke, Virginia. She's from Roanoke. So you guys got family pretty close and local to where you're at. Yes, we do. That's very awesome. Very awesome. So how about when you think about things that you consume, because you're, you're on YouTube, I mean, all the time with your stuff, but what are things that you watch or that you find value in from podcasts or YouTube or even books that you find may be helpful for others? And it could be professional or just personal stuff you enjoy. Well, obviously, Echo asked why. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's the right answer, man. But, yes, we I actually listen to a large variety of content. And the main reason I do is I want to try to take ideas from other industries and try to figure out how to use them in you know, our industry, you know, different ways of teaching, different ways of usually more, it's a, trying to keep people captivated Yeah. because, you know, there's nothing worse than listening to a dry lecture about motors. Trust me, I did it 20 years ago. It didn't work, but so we're, <laughs> so that's, that's probably it, but usually it's something unrelated. I do enjoy, you know, in automation, I probably enjoy Chris Lukey's uh, manufacturing happy hour. That's a fun one. Yep. Uh, Ray, Ray and Allison over manufacturing out loud. They're, they're doing some great things. Uh, but really I enjoy, I don't know. What else do I enjoy? I enjoy crime podcasts. Those are, those are something I enjoy. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I mean, and Chris over there at Manufacturing Happy Hour does a great job. He's he's been on. We've we've been on his show, and then even Ray uh, Zignano, he's been on Eco Ask Why. So mm -hmm. I mean, I love what they're doing at Manufacturing Out Loud. So uh, that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, how about we we'd like to play a game, Tim, if you're willing to play. Just it's okay. Lightning round. We just ask a bunch of random stuff, and whatever comes up comes up. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to fire from the hip, man. So let's see what happens. So starting easy. Favorite food, buddy? Pizza. Pizza. All right. Now, is that deep dish or does it matter? Um, pizza is pizza. And even bad <laughs> pizza is good pizza. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't even have to be warm, right? That's right. That's right. How about adult beverage, man? Um, either cheap beer or probably good bourbon. All right. Well, the spectrum, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, sports teams. I, you know, I don't follow a lot of sports. I do enjoy watching it, but I, I don't get as big into it as some people. In fact, usually if I see somebody that's like really good with the numbers, yeah, my head goes into recruiting and right. And I'm like, Hey, let's talk about what you can do with that map. Did you know the amazing engineering things that you can do with that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have that all time favorite movie. Oh man, all time favorite movie. That is a tough one. And so I'm just going to have to throw what just came at the top of my head. Okay. And I don't even know why I did, but walk the line. Walk the line. Okay. Yeah. How about um, favorite TV show of all time? Ooh, favorite TV show. Probably Star Trek. You can tell I'm a little geeky. Okay. 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 How about music, man? I like anything rock and roll. Anything rock and roll. So favorite rock and roll band, what would it be? Oh my. That is so difficult. Amber's over here laughing now. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I love them all, and why can I not even think of a band now? <laughs> so is this 80s band or, or 80s rock? Well, I did grow up in the late 80s, so yeah, probably 80s and 90s I do love, but uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know if like Metallica was that list. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, I definitely am a fan of Metallica, yeah. I'd even, yeah, Megadeth, I'd even go to more of the hard rock, yeah. Okay, okay, well, we're getting to know a little bit more about you, Tim, so it's starting to, re we're peeling back the layers, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about uh, a destination, man? Somewhere you've never been, but you hope to go one day. Um, well, it needs to be warm, to for, per Amber's requirement. 
um, and probably have water because yeah, Amber and I, we love the beach. Uh, we were actually married barefoot on the beach. Okay. So, so yeah, it would definitely be warm and have water. I got you now. All right. So you want to take Amber out and have a wonderful night. Where are you going and what are you doing? Well, we are probably going to start at a nice restaurant and probably <laughs> I mean, it's been so long since we've been out, but no, realistically, you know, cause she did kind of say it real, you know, and here's where it's more about the preparation than where we go is if we're going out, we're separating by, by three or four and it's like, okay, one of us is finishing up work. One of us is going to handle the kids right? just because we are, we're, she's right here. We're right. six feet apart from each other all day. But then, yeah, we would probably pick somewhere, probably semi-quiet, where we can just have some conversation without the kids, because obviously the kids are right here. Right. Um, and you know, we're, you know, it just, just, we just love to converse, really. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I mean, it's so good that, that you guys have that relationship. So, last one: dogs or cats, man? Ah, uh, dogs. All right, that was the only one right answer, and you got it right. So, man, that was awesome. So, thank you, Tim. That was a lot of fun, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> now we we call Eco S Y. We we love to end with the Y, Tim, and uh, it talks about your passion. You know what drives you. So if somebody were to, to want to know what Tim Wilburn's Y is, what would that be? You know, Amber and I really enjoy being part of something bigger than ourselves. And you know, I would urge everybody to find your passion and make it your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know that that is just such a need in our industry. And in fact, I would urge you, you know, I would urge everybody out there, you know, you need to start, find some way to volunteer. And one, don't tell me that you don't have time because yeah, Amber and I don't have time, but we still volunteer. So, you know, I, I, I am a firm believer in the 10% rule and I, I believe that is money and time. And so if you are, you know, in high school and you're working 20 hours a week at night, you need to find two hours somewhere to volunteer and do something. You know, if you've got a 40 hour work schedule, you need to find somewhere to volunteer. And yes, if you are an executive and you are wide open running 70 hours a week, you need to find seven hours somewhere to volunteer your time. No doubt. No doubt. It's so important to pour back into others and particularly, you know, for the industry that we, that we support Tim, you know, just trying to help people be get better and then recognize the, the, the greatness that it is and, and debunk those per, uh, perceptions that, that we talked about earlier. So now you're doing a phenomenal job. How would people get in touch with, 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 with you and TW Controls if they want to learn more? Well, you can go to TWcontrols.com, and I would love for you to look at our products, but I would love it even more if you looked at our lessons and started learning and get into our industry. No doubt. And we'll make sure we link all that in our show notes for our listeners. And Tim, this has been a blast. I had a wonderful time, you know, getting to know you. And, and thank you for being such a, a wonderful guest on Eco Ask Why. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 